So on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Micah Spates, myself, Apostle Belinda Thomas, and my husband, Pastor Walter Thomas, we want to welcome you today. God bless you. There is a God bless you. I am Pastor Micah, lead pastor of the Be Restored Worship Center, and I am so glad that you took the time out today to celebrate with us as we continue um, just to celebrate what God has done for us in these 12 years as a ministry. So today, it is my distinct pleasure to have someone 
uh, help us celebrate that I've known almost 30 years while he was at Morehouse College. I was at Clark Atlanta University, and he has always been an individual of great vision and excellence. And he has grown into an awesome uh, representation of the kingdom in the world. So I present to you today the ministry of none other than Overseer Kenneth Moss Jr., the pastor of the Cathedral of the Holy Spirit of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Let's receive him as he comes. Leviticus chapter number nine, beginning at verse number 22. And then go with us to Second Chronicles chapter number five, beginning at verse 11. And then we'll have one, two, three more passages in Second Chronicles. We'll go to chapter number six, and then we'll be in chapter number seven. Leviticus nine, verse number 22. Then jump to Second Chronicles chapter number five, and then chapter number six, and then chapter number seven. Leviticus nine and twenty-two. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them and came down from offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Go with me now to Second Chronicles chapter number 5. Second Chronicles chapter number 5. Second Chronicles that's it, chapter number 5, verse number 11. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait for by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haram, of Judathim, with the sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, playing cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them the hundred and twenty priests sounding their trumpets. And it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Uh, go, go now to chapter number 6 uh, verse number uh, help me 19 2nd Chronicles chapter 6 verse number 19 have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night 
upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there and hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of the people Israel which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from the dwelling place even from heaven and when thou, thou hearest forgive. When thou hearest forgive. You go to verse number 40, same chapter. Verse number 40. Now, my God, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let the, thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of God thy servant. Chapter 7 verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consume the burnt offerings and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house Lord Jesus and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory that of the Lord had filled the house the glory of the Lord that was upon the house they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worship and praise the Lord saying for he is good and his mercy endureth forever look, look now at verse number 12 look at verse number 12 and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice if I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among the people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto thy prayer that is made in this place for now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and never my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually perpetually continuously without ceasing God I, the subject today I want to preach for another from the subject matter God look at us that's what I want to preach today today I'm gonna to preach God look at us uh, look, look at somebody and, 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 and make it personal and say God look at me now now, now, now I want you I, I want you whatever you do don't push me to scream too much. I want to teach as long as I can. But I'm telling you, I feel God all in this text. It, it is. It, it is. When I look, if you will, for a moment, Leviticus is where uh, we've begun our discussion because I want to give you a tone and a tenor. Uh, you, you, you may be seated, uh, ushers. I, I want to give you the tone uh, and the tenor uh, of the text. Uh, as we look in Leviticus, Leviticus uh, is a law, of, a book of much laws. Uh, it's in the first five books called Torah uh, and, and in uh, the Leviticus you find the order and the proper way in which God manifests himself and he manifests himself through a structure he manifests himself through a, 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 a pattern that lays out the right way to get God's attention uh, Leviticus says, uh, if, if you will, that, that this offering or this sacrifice that was brought before the God, it, it, it was not just a, a peace offering, but it was, I love you, Lord, it was a 
sin offering. Uh, it, it was what they brought to the Lord. And what the Lord declared unto Moses in the presence of Aaron, he says, now when this, this offering is brought to me in prayer, as it's brought to me in prayer, the Bible says that God himself allows there to be fire from heaven that all the people may see his glory. God, I feel you. And while they're in church or while they're in worship, they're looking at all these animals on the altar and they're sitting there, if you'll come with me for a moment, they're sitting there and without any gasoline, God, I feel you, without any matches and without any torch, they're just looking at the sacrifice. They're looking at all this blood and all these animals that are on the altar. And once they begin to pray and they're all there in white, they're all there in one place, in the right uniform and they're all praying to the right God God says he shows up and before the sight of the people a fire comes from heaven and a glory I love you fills the house and the Bible says the glory is so thick that the priest can't minister God, I love you. The, 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 the glory is so heavy that the priests cannot even do their ritual rites. Uh, notice, if you will, it is, notice, it is the singleness of mind of the people. It is the intent heart of the people that declares we will come as one voice, as one people to give one sacrifice in one place, to pray to one God, to petition for one thing. And God God sees that there is a oneness in his people and he declares he sends fire. Now, now, now I want to talk uh, uh, for a moment about a prayer that brings fire. There's a difference. There's a difference between uh, uh, just praying amiss, uh, 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 praying through, and a prayer that brings fire. Now, now, notice, if you will, that there are not that there are not few, just one or two people. There are people that we know in the Bible. Uh, I, Isaiah, uh, if, if I'm if I'm correct, help me. Am I right? Yeah, Isaiah 10 uh, and 17 talks a bit about a fire that is able to consume uh, and destroy thorns uh, and thickets. That, 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 that there is a place in God where you can pray until fair fire shows up and consumes things. Now, 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 if you will, uh, uh, Elijah uh, in, in First Kings, Elijah gives a different type of prayer. It is a competitive fire prayer. Uh, he gets himself before the heathen gods and says that your God is not real and my God is. And he says, let us make two altars, two altars. And those what he said make two altars and I want you to take your altar and I want you to put fatlings on it I want you to put wood on it I want you to put gas on it I want you to put fuel on it and I'm gonna let you pray to your God and then Elijah says but I'm gonna do differently I'm gonna make my altar and I'm gonna put the lamb there and I'm gonna build it on rocks and I'm gonna put water on my altar I'm going to soak my altar with water and the Bible says that he stands there and declares now I want you to pray to your God and I want you to pray and the Bible says hours pass and Elijah lets them pray and when the Bible declares that they begin to cut themselves and they begin to do self mutilation unto their God and their God does not show up and then Elijah opens his mouth and prays to the fire God and says Lord I want you to bring a fire now notice here, his prayer brought a fire. Then now read the text. I've been reading the text. It is not a prayer that just consumed the fatling. No, it was a prayer that devoured everything. It consumed the prayer altar. It consumed the fatling. It absorbed all the water. Come with me. It then burnt up the stone and then burnt up the dust from the stone until the fire left nothing. I'm talking about a prayer that brings down. Now, 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 if if you're not if you're not if you're not careful, you'll miss God thinking that prayer is not relevant in New Testament. John three, it makes it very clear. Uh, John the Baptist says that I am not fit, and I'm not worthy to baptize you, for there is another. God, I love you. There is another that is going to come, and he will baptize you. God, I feel you. He gonna baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Come here, read the Bible, and 
fire. You're not, you're not just going to have the Holy Ghost. You're going to have a Holy Ghost and fire. And then Acts 2, 4 and says, and then they were all in one place on one accord and they began to pray. And then there was a sound. God, I feel you. And there was a sound that the prayer should be a sound. You can't come to God as some mute. You got to open your mouth and make a sound under heaven until there was a pull. There's a pull that God will bring down his fire. There is a prayer. And the Bible says, and the Holy Ghost sat upon each of them, likened unto cloven tongues of fire. No, 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 not clouds, but God is moving from cloud ministry to I'm putting fire over your head. I don't have nobody here. I don't have no spiritual folk here that, that'll say, I, I need another filling of the Holy Ghost so that I can pray down his fire. God, I feel you. But, but Moses, why you want God's fire? I got some stuff in my life, thank you, Leviticus, that I need God to consume. God, I feel you. I, I, don't, I don't need, help me, help me, help me, preachers. I, I don't need a grace to cover this thorn. No, no, no. I'm praying for fire to consume the form God I feel you Lord there's some stuff in my life that I need you to burn up God I feel you there's some stuff in my life I need you to destroy that there is no evidence left like Elijah Lord I'm praying that you'll get even not just the proof but I want you to consume everything in me that's not like you I'm praying for a fire that will purify that will sanctify that'll make me holy that'll make me live right that will make me a vessel of righteousness I pray for fire God, I, love it. I pray for fire I want, I'm praying I'm not God I love you we are not praying for no car we're not praying for no husbands we're not praying for a new house we're not praying for no boyfriends no the devil's a liar God we're praying down fire I need about seven folk in here to Open up your mouth and declare, Lord, send your fire. I ask you, sit down. Sit down. I ask you not to push me. Sit down. We are, we, pulling, we are opening our fat mouth. I'm hoarse now. We are opening our mouths calling God down so he can send the fire I'm gonna watch this watch this I'm gonna show you the fire I'm talking about I'm talking about a fire God I love you that when you start worshiping him your mind just starts going crazy and you start thinking of everything he did now look at the text so you can understand what I was saying about the prayer posture notice when God comes they start kneeling on pavement God I feel you when God shows up they're not in a chair they get in the pavement and God says they begin to lay their faces down in the I don't have nobody here I'm talking about a prayer that will let your makeup run that'll let your hat fall off that'll let you run your stockings and break your heel I'm talking about a power that'll make you lay your face on the carpet and scream your holy God that'll make you holler Lord you're powerful Lord you deserve the glory and I humble myself in your glory I am I'm praying now a, a prayer mother a prayer of fire this this ain't this ain't help me this ain't this ain't a fire to keep me warm Shh. it's a fire that'll make you say oh wretched man that I am It's a prayer that'll get you out of my business and get you into your business. God, I love you. It, it, it's a prayer that when you open your mouth, you'll declare, Lord, my lips are unclean. <laughs> you'll say, Lord, take, 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 take from the altar 
purify my mouth, clean my lips. My mouth is dirty. My mouth, no, 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 no. When real people pray, they start praying about themselves. And when you call down the fire of God, you can't call a fire to burn me up. You got to call a fire to burn you up. Oh, ain't nobody talking now. Ain't nobody talking now. I'm not talking about a fire to burn up the devil. I'm talking about a fire to burn the devil out of you. When, when you, when you, when you pray till you tell God, God, I'm a liar. Oh. God, I'm scandalous. I'm a fornicator. Lord, I'm a drunkard. Lord, I'm a wine bibber. I'm a womanizer. Lord, I'm a thief. I've been stealing your time. Lord, I'm a gossiper. Lord, I'm a seed sower. Lord, I don't know how to stop eating. I'm a glutton. God, I'm a homosexual. Lord, I'm a pedophile. God, I'm a rape. Oh, y'all gonna look at me crazy. Lord, I'm a rapist. Lord, I'm just a downright good for nothing. But if you just help me, if you just get this out of me, God, if you create, come on, David, in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. I'm trying not to holler in here, but I'm talking about a prayer of fire that will get you right. Prayer that will make you boldly, come on, go to the throne of grace and when you come to the throne of grace if you read the text the bible says Jerome read it properly and don't leave it wrong it consumed everything on the altar bishop my prayer in this season is lord get everything out of me that's not god now, now what's crazy what's crazy it was crazy is as i've been praying that i've been hearing i said i heard this before I heard this prayer. This is the prayer my father used to pray. And I, I, I'm sitting there, I'm saying, Lord, get everything in me that's not like you. I need you to get it out of me. God, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, Lord. I feel God helping us. And this prayer, this time of prayer, this time of sanctification, it is not for you to pretend. Let me help you. Don't come in here, Roshaka Baha, and speaking in tongues, and don't tell God the truth about you. You need to open your mouth and tell God, help me. God, deliver me. God, clean me up. God, sanctify me. God, help me. And, and, and get this, get this, this prayer of fire will bring, watch this, his glory, watch it, into the house. Here, here it gets crazy. Now, now read chapter, uh, we're in Second Chronicles now. Second Chronicles, uh, if you will, it is a marrying, it is a marrying of all of the history. First Chronicles, first one and two, of course, they were all just one book written by Ezra. This is a book or writings that was given by Ezra to the people of Israel to unify the people, to give them their history, and to remind them the correct emphasis. And we'll find out through all of First and Second Chronicles that the emphasis amongst the people is now that you are out of exile, now that you are out of captivity, you need to make the synagogue your central place. You're going to find that in Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles. All it's going to talk about is the tabernacle, and it's going to keep reminding them of the history. It's going to draw them through the lineage of David and talk about the history from Adam up to David, and then from David to all his kingship. And then what you'll see in Second Chronicles is throughout of it, it begins to mirror, it begins to repeat, it begins to pontificate things that have already been stated because why the people have been in exile and they need to get them back to God and what it says I want you to pay attention to this pay attention to this he tells them and throughout every, every chapter number five six and seven that there is a prayer of supplication now now supplication I'll go home and look it up supplication is a begging and a pleading Humbly, it, 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 notice it is a begging and is it a pleading 
humbly. So that we are in a posture now of not just asking God one time for it. I I'm telling those that are here that are here coming to prayer, uh, you're praying for an hour. And, and we got a whole hour to pray. And, and if you're going to pray for an hour, I I'm telling them, don't get lost in idle prayer. Uh, make some stuff known to God and just repeat it. it, it repeat it. Don't just ask them once. Say it multiple times. Supplicate that thing. Don't just say, Lord, forgive me, and then spend another 59 minutes. No, no. Say, Lord, forgive me, and then, then act like you're special. Act like you don't understand, and then say it again, Lord, forgive me. And then act like you don't forgot what you said, and say, Lord, forgive me again. And then say, Lord, forgive me. When you get about the four or five of them, give, give them about seven more forgive me's. Lord, I love you. And, and then when you get to about ten good forgive me's, then say, Lord, help me. Oh, God, I love you. And, and don't just say, help me one time, but tell God, help me at least 10, 15 times. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. It's in the text. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. By about nine times into the help me, your soul going to grab a hold of it, and it's going to make a travail, and you're going to go from help me to help me, to help me, to help me. But then, 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 then you gotta open your mouth and you gotta say glory and you gotta say glory again and then you gotta say glory again and then you say glory then you say glory and then you say glory then you say glory then you say glory then you come back you come back and say have your way 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 have them, 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 them. when you get to the right place when you're in the right place then you call that big old fat name Jesus 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 thou son of David Jesus that's what I love about the saints of old they didn't have no degree they didn't have no big old house they didn't have no big old Mercedes but they would tell you call the name and you didn't sit at the altar and call the name three times they said no 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 call them again call them call them Jesus you know, Jesus 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 they call them faster Jesus 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 and before you knew it about 45 minutes to an hour in it your mouth full of foam snots running down your face salt all in your mouth it stopped Thinking, and you, Jesus, 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 and the Holy Ghost, I don't have no help, showed up. It's called supplication. It's when you repeatedly beg them for it. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Because you're not humble. You're acting like you got it going on. And I'm telling you, I know you. You too broke. Your body is too sick. Your family is too messed up for you to try to come here acting all aristocratic and all highfalutin and acting like you got it going on with two bags. And listen to me. Stop with your arrogant self. Open your fat mouth and stop supplicating and tell God help me help me help me help me God I need somebody to grab it help me God help me help me get out of this help me be delivered help me keep my mind help me to keep my body help me to not lose my house help me not to lose my kids help me not to lose my job help me not to die of a disease help 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 Somebody open your mouth and shout help! And who shut up? Almost there. Almost there. And the Bible says, when they begin to supplicate, uh, where are you, Brother Kareem? When, when, when they begin to supplicate, when they begin to call on God, when they begin to pour His glory in, watch this. The Bible says, and then Solomon stops praying and says, God, watch this. I'm in chapter 7 now. He says, God, 
listen to Solomon, open your eyes. I've been reading this text, Need. I've been so confused. I'm like, what in the world? I, 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 who, who, who do you think you are? Solomon's like, no, 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 no. God, I've been praying. I've been supplicating. And now he's in chapter 7. He says, now I'm going to put a demand on you. I want you to open your eyes. God, Lord, I love you. Why, 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 why are you saying that more? God, he is, Sneed. The Lord told me he is omnipresent. God, I love you, Solomon. I thank you for the wisdom. God, you're with me, but your eyes are closed. See, oh God, what I'm in now, you gotta open your eyes. You gotta know what I'm in. You gotta see how I'm struggling. You gotta see how I'm hurt. You gotta see how I'm broke. And God, I need you to open your eye and open your ear. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What in the world? Sneed, he's, he's Sneed, 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 what in the world is Solomon telling me? Open your eyes? I said, Lord, help me understand this. He says, watch this, I'm in scripture, Google it. He says, watch this, she Google it. I wink at your ignorance. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wink at your ignorance. Sneed, I'm getting to understand God. When I'm doing stuff that he don't like, rather than him look at me and judge me, he winks his eye at it. Got to come slower. When I'm out of his will, rather than him judge me for what he sees, because watch it, because once he see me, he got to judge me. He go like this, I'm going to just wink on it. I'm going to just wink. And then what Solomon is saying, Lord, I'm in the right place now. I don't need you winking. I'm doing right by you now. I'm in the right place, doing the right stuff, at the right time, in the right place. I want you to open your eyes and see me. God, I need someone to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the hour to tell God you can watch me now. Last year, I struggled. Two months ago, I was overtaken. Five years ago, I was a mess. But God, I'm telling you the truth. I dare you to look at me now. I'm reading my word like never before. I'm praying like never before. I'm fasting like never before. I want you to open your eyes and see me. Now, now. See? Now, watch this. I need you to see me, Solomon, thank you, and hear me. Take your ears and listen to what I'm saying. Watch this. Here's the wisdom. God's helping me. And, and, and only, only mature saints could get happy over this. I'm thanking God this week, watch this, for the prayers he did not answer. No one this side. I don't, I don't have no. I don't have no mature people over there. Let me talk over here. I'm in a place now that I'm grown in God, and I'm starting to tell God I thank you for the stuff that I prayed for that you did not hear, that you did not give me. Because if you would have gave me what I prayed for, I would have lost my mind. I would have lost everything. God, watch it, there's only mature people. God, I'm giving you praise for the stuff I prayed for that you didn't give me. God, I love you. I love you because some of the stuff I was praying for, it wasn't in your will. Some of the stuff I was praying for was not my season. Some of the stuff I was praying for, it didn't belong to me. But now I'm mature and I don't pray my will, but I'm praying the will of God. And now that I'm praying the will of God, I want God to open his ear and hear me. I'm in a place now. I'm in a place. I'm in a place where, Lord, watch this. You can trust what I'm praying. Shh. That's, that's, that's what I've been telling them. I've been telling God, Lord, you can trust what I'm praying now. I'm being mature. Can I be transparent and you not leave the church? Can I be transparent and you not leave? First year, 
when my dad died, I wasn't ready to pray because my prayer was, get them. I want you to get everybody, everything that ain't with you, everybody that didn't do what the bishop asked. I want you to kill all the tricon. I want you to kill the men. I want you to kill their wives. I want you to give the kids cancer, kill the grandkids. And I'm telling you what I was praying. I said, Lord, I want you to come down and give the whole family. I don't want them to have AIDS. I want them to have AIDS, cancer, diabetes. I want them to have high blood pressure, and I want them to lose limbs in Jesus. That's how I was praying, because I was so angry, and I was so angry and I was so angry and I was so angry but then I read my Bible and my Bible told me we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against powers and principal so my prayer would have been to some person but it wasn't the person that was against me it was a power it was a principality and if I killed the person the principality would still be alive so now my prayer is not directed to people it's not to Mike and Susie and Jennifer and Lucy no my prayer now is bind everything on earth that is not like you I want you to bind the devil on every side I don't want to pray against a person I want to pray against an assignment I pray against every assignment that was sent from hell to come against this church and I bind the devil in Jesus name because you have no place because your name is over our ministry I dare you to grab your neighbor's hand and tell them stop talking about people stop fighting people stop fighting personality and fight the assignment of the devil that's against your life I dare you to grab your neighbor's hand and shake it like you're gonna shake it off and tell them bind the devil bind the enemy don't bind your wife don't bind your boss bind the spirit on your wife bind the spirit on your boss don't bind your kids. Bind the spirit on your kids and tell the devil, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we cast you out. I dare you to give your neighbor a high five and see neighbor. I dare you to stop fighting people and fighting personalities and start letting the devil know I know who you are I know what you're doing and I bind the devil because no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper I dare you to shake your neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it off and say neighbor stop fighting folks and start talking to God because my God shall supply all of my needs and if God be for us who can be against us I dare you to open your mouth and declare unto God for God I live and for God I die I am a soldier in the army of the Lord I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord I don't mind dying in the army of the Lord I feel like having church I dare you to look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and say neighbor let them talk let them dog you out let them lie on you let them use your name let them scandalize you let them turn their back on you but tell them if God be for us oh you ain't said nothing who can be against us give your neighbor a high five and say neighbor oh you didn't say it say neighbor I bind the devil that's coming after you tell him I bind the devil that's coming for your family tell him I bind the devil that's coming for your health tell him I bind the devil that's coming for your children tell him I bind the devil that's coming for your mind tell him I bind the devil that's coming for your finances tell him I bind the devil that's on an assignment and I lose I lose God in your life I lose healing in your life I lose favor in your life I release power in your life I release joy in your life I release peace in your life I release job 
happiness in your life for the joy of the Lord in my strength if you need joy leap for it if you need joy clap for it if you need joy shoot 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 on the God with the voice of triumph let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom the Lord hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy I am a winner I am the head not the tail above not belief lender not borrow and my God shall 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 supply according to the riches and glory I, I, I have, I'm blessed in the city I'm blessed in the field I'm blessed when I come and when I go shout it out I'm done. Somebody got it. Look. I want to show you. Grab one person, one or two people by the hand. Grab by the hand. And say, neighbor, did you hear what pastor read? Ask him, did they hear? Did you hear? Did you hear chapter 7? Watch what happens. Look at chapter 7. Yeah. What he prays yeah. in verse number 1. Yeah. What he prays in verse number 2. Yeah. And what he prays yeah. in verse number 3. Yeah. God himself takes the same prayer that Solomon prayed. And God said, your prayer is going to be my promise. Now I'm going to give you what you promise. And your prayer will be what I say. I dare you to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, pray until God says what you say. Tell them pray until God shows up on your behalf. Tell them pray until God opens doors that you need open. Shout it out. Shout it out. Yeah. Glory, 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 
said, get this, get this, get this, get what God said. When you get God to look at you and he starts hearing you, watch what he says. He, God says, when I speak, rain. When I speak, locusts. When I speak, yes. desolate. Yes. It ain't coming to your house. Yes. Because I'm looking at you and I hear you and everybody around you, they're going to be attacked. They're going to have rain. They're going to have locusts. They're going to have kicker worm. They're going to have pestilence. He said, but if not people, which I call by my day, humble pray 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 then Watch this. I'm going to read this and I'm done. If we do this, 16, Derek, this is what he tells us. For now, have I, watch this, chosen and sanctified. Watch this. Watch what he says. This house, that my name may be there forever grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor our prayer is not seasonal tell them our prayer is not for a year tell them our prayer is not just for us but our prayer is that this house will have his name forever and ever and ever and ever for me Children, my children's children, my children's children's children, shout it out. Now listen, I got to obey God. It's going to look crazy, but just do what I'm telling you. We're going to shout and then shout. Only 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But everybody in here that's going to cover it with pastor that God is calling this house. Yes. What God promised Bishop, yes. it belongs to this house. Yes. And we are yes. the sons yes. and the daughters yes. of the Bishop. Yes. And the promises, the promises. of God yes. are the yay. And amen. Rap. Grab somebody next to you. Grab somebody next to you. On the count of three, we're going to follow the instruction of the Bible. The Bible says uh -huh. that they lifted their voices, their voices. Like, a like a trumpet. Now, watch this. This is not a trumpet. That's a flute praise. That's a flute. It's in the woodwinds. But that's a flute praise. But that's not what the Bible says. They lifted their voices like a trumpet in Zion. I dare to give God a trumpet praise. Let me help you. Uh -huh. God's give me the wisdom uh -huh. yes. to a sign on my hands. God showed me right. in the Bible uh -huh. that, watch this, yes. screaming yes. 
and hollering. Uh -huh. There is no pitch. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's no pitch to a holler. Watch this. And Satan that he created, it has perfect pitch. Because he got every instrument in him. But when we give God a Shabbat praise, it throws off the devil. And he doesn't know what's happening because he's trying to find out who's praising him so he can stop you. But when all of us do it with one accord, he don't know who to get. Give God a praise right now. know what I'm telling you is the truth I dare you to go home read the Bible it says in Jesus when he's on the cross the Bible says he gives a yell a loud yell and gives up the ghost you know what that is the Bible says that the Jesus is the lion of Judah get this quick I'm not gonna take too long the lion doesn't destroy its prey off of its strength it doesn't even destroy its prey off of its speed what the lion does he roars and it's the roar that confuses the prey because the prey don't know where the lion is and that's why when Jesus was on the cross he gave out the lion's roar because he was going down to hell to get the keys and that devil was at the cross but Jesus was already at revival I promise grab that hand here's the last time grab that hand tight we're going to give us, uh, uh, we're going to give God a loud Shabbat praise, like a trumpet in Zion. And after the third hit on the instruments, we're going to dance. Why? Because I want the devil to know I'm confusing you with my prey. I'm confusing you with my praise. And then I'm going after my stuff. I'm going to holler and then I'm going to pursue. I'm going to holler and then I'm going to go after it. I'm going to yell and I'm going to take back everything that the devil stole. Grab that hand next to you. Grab that hand. I mean lose your voice. Give God a Shabbat praise. Lift it like a trumpet. And then when you get done, grab that neighbor's hand and shout till you know victory has come to your house. Are you ready? Grab that hand. One, two, three. Ah! Amen. God bless you, Overseer Moles. We are so thankful to God for your yes and for helping us celebrate here today um, what the Lord has done. And I, it is our prayer that God continues to bless you and the ministry there in Bridgeport, Connecticut, as you impact the world. I'm so thankful to God that you said yes and that you are continuing the legacy of your father, Bishop Kenneth Moles Sr. Man, just keep going and keep doing the work in Jesus' name. Listen, this is the perfect time and the perfect opportunity. If you don't know Jesus or saying, listen, I want to know him in a very real way. Here I am, Lord. He will come into your life. All you've got to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. It's just that simple. So it does not matter what you've done up to this point. All you have to do is surrender all to him and he will meet you where you are. You don't have to get it together. Just come to him as you are. And as you walk it out, 
he will do the change in you that's necessary to push you into purpose in him. So it's our prayer that you don't leave this moment and this opportunity without accepting him as savior. This is a wonderful place to be. And that's on the Lord's side in Jesus name. It is our privilege to serve you all here at Be Restored Worship Center. And we really believe that this is good ground. God has shown himself to be faithful unto us that as we sow into good ground here, we have seen his work in our lives individually and collectively. So this is the perfect opportunity to sow seed into good ground. You can go to Givelify, Look for Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, Georgia, PayPal at Be Restored Worship Center, or pay a visit to berestored.net, and the links to give will be there. But listen, it does not matter like how small or insignificant you feel like your seed is, sow it as unto the Lord. God loves a cheerful giver. He does not look at the amount you give, but he looks at the heart in which you give. So I believe that every seed that you sow, in faith, there will be a harvest from that seed in Jesus name. We will be back here on next Sunday, 10 a.m. right here on Facebook Live and at 4 p.m. Listen, you don't want to miss 4 o'clock p.m. on next Sunday. Get together, gather your family together, gather your friends. We will be celebrating the official mortgage burning on next Sunday to close this thing out. Listen, God has done it and we are gonna celebrate. We did not wanna let this time pass and not acknowledge what the Lord has done. So we're closing out our 12th anniversary with our mortgage burning celebration on next Sunday and our guest will be Bishop Diane Collins. So listen, you don't want to miss 4 p.m. on next Sunday and we are so thankful for the work and the foundation that has been laid by Apostle Belinda and Pastor Walter Thomas. So we celebrate y'all. Let's celebrate together on next Sunday. So listen, as you go throughout this week and go throughout this day, I pray that the favor of God would be with you, that everywhere you go, God's hand will be upon your life and his protection. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life and over your family, that no evil can come nigh your dwelling. So go in the peace of the Lord. And I pray that everything that your hands go to do this week in him would prosper and that he put you in the ease of every battle. We pray this prayer in Jesus name. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I'll see you next Sunday here at Be Restored Worship Center. God bless you. Mm -hmm.